Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to another episode of the Open Task Podcast. This is a special occasion. Merry Christmas, Joe. Merry Christmas. Happy Kwanzaa. Happy, Happy Kwanzaa. This is... Last day of Hanukkah. Yeah. As well. Yeah. It's a convergence of a lot of holidays today. Convergence. Or oh, maybe yesterday was the last day of Hanukkah. I mean, uh, I, I think it was actually. But last happy night. season's greetings. Season's greetings. Kuji Chakalia. Festivus. Kuji Chakalia. Habaragani. Habaragani. Yes. Indeed, 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 indeed. I'm, uh, I'm broadcasting directly from uh, Lamert Park, Los Angeles. Of course. Thank you, Southwest. <laughs> Southwest been doing a number of people. Uh, <laughs> bruh. Hey, look, I got, so I got a, I got a, uh, uh, just gonna tell you real quick. I got a, uh, um, it's like an older sister I grew up with at church. She worked for Southwest for 30 years mm-hmm. and got caught in Jamaica, got like oh. stuck in Jamaica. And she just retired. And so she's got all this status, but it doesn't, she, it doesn't do it. <laughs> she, just like anybody else, she's mm-hmm. stuck. <laughs> she's stuck. So they got her to Fort Lauderdale for like two, three days. Okay. Before she'd get to Washington. It's crazy, man. I'm sorry, go ahead. No, I, what I was going to say is like, they, they say, okay, well, you got 14 days. How, what am I going to do in these 14 days? Like, you know I mean? Like they, the, the rules they have for getting stuck, like they'll pay for it, but like, you know, there's no flights like in the next like five, six days. Like it's, it's, it's wild. So, you know, luckily, you know, I was able to change my, my clinic schedule. I'm sorry to any patients. Uh, hopefully ain't got, ain't no patients listening to this. Cause I don't want y'all listening. If you find this, don't, don't listen, turn it off. Uh, but um, you know, I'm sorry to any patients that had to get rescheduled. It is what it is though. You know, it's, it's, it's all good. It's all good. I'm with, I'm with family. We just dropped my mom off at the airport. You know what I mean? So like, it's all good. Oh, good. Absolutely. But, is so, your apartment okay? Yeah. Is it is it is it is the apartment all right? Um, are there freezing anything freezing in Nashville that you've been okay? Just check. Michigan and Wakefield has not texted me or told me anything, so I'm okay. going to assume everything's great. <laughs> and, and, back, and, and we will we will continue with that assumption. <laughs> if I get back and and, and 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 my apartment is condemned, then we will know something else. But you know, and it's with this hope we return to the south. In the words of Martin Luther King. That's exactly. That's that's number one goal is just to get into the Nashville <laughs> metropolitan area, get my car out of the uh the lockup that it's in, you know, uh yeah, an extra uh, three days of, of I was of, gonna say that that's gonna be fun. That is. Yeah, yeah. I you know, sometimes I wonder if the airport is in cahoots with this thing. Yeah, they're working together. Yeah. They're working together. Yeah. Yeah. Twenty six dollars per day for an extra three days. What did what did Stanley say? You all really work together on this one. When, yeah. they, when, they, got, yeah. when they get locked exactly. in. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. But hey, hey, guys. So you know, um, we actually meant to do this episode at the very beginning of the football season, but mm-hmm. as fake and serendipity would have it, we are doing this episode at the exact right time because yeah, you and I both have made it to the the coveted final of the La Liga uh, fantasy football league. This is uh, La Liga Bowl number seven. Yes, yes, we have. It's, it's my first year in the league. Uh, you know, I, yes. I, I, I looked into a nice situation. You know, I, I had two keepers that were uh, uh, pivotal to this run. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm sure. And and, and Joe uh, received the 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 best management. See, Joe had the award that I think is the most telling award of all. The best management. And oh, no, let me let me give you your flowers, man. Like, thank you weekly on the sleeper app which if you're not on the sleeper app for your fantasy football leagues i encourage you to, to do whatever it takes to shift over the sleeper yeah. is the bomb uh but the sleeper app will award each week like the various categories and joe consistently won the most efficient manager award which means that he did the best he could with the roster he had which very frequently as you can see led to w-i-n-s and thank you so um thank you know you. we both we both Kind of snuck our way into the uh, playoffs. It was it was sad to see Stan not make it, man. You know we were the uh, fifth and sixth seeds uh, under man. under some outrageous uh, circumstances. Uh, yes, um, and I'm very proud of you. First year in, um, you hit the ground running. You always know, kind of. You're you're usually you're aware and ready, uh, which is which is helpful. And uh, in, in, uh, and all that things acknowledge him, and he will direct that path. So you you usually know where you're going once you hit the ground, and it is. It is most evidenced uh, by you know your your work this past year. It's interesting too because Coleman, um, who usually has he usually does an outstanding job, he um, he has a newborn and this just wasn't his year. He had some injuries early on, 
and yeah. he was quieter. Uh, but when he had his first year, he came through like, man, why? Well, he came through kick, kicking everybody's tail. Mike Sterling came through his first two years, beat everybody, and won the first yep. two in a row. Yeah. Uh, and so, so history is kind. History has been kind in this league to the to the newcomers, yeah. and uh, and so we're just uh, not only are we ecstatic that obviously that you you've uh, not only been a part of the league but that you've you've uh, embraced it and 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 truly have uh, shined uh, in in that in that capacity um, as well. So we look forward to hey we kick off. I don't know if you have any players in Thursday's game. Uh, I don't think I do, but it technically starts the 29th, um, and so. Um, well, I don't know if I do yet. I haven't set a lineup yet. So it technically starts the 29th, uh, but we're very, very excited to be in the League of Bowl 7. I've done a couple graphics. Uh, we're just going to stick with the one that I've, I've created now because um, <laughs> uh, I, I didn't create the La Liga graphic, so it's the, I, I don't have it inverted yet uh, to uh, the black font. Is, I, I want to make it white so I can do some things with it, but I, I'll work on that yeah uh over the course of the week but um always gives me a challenge in canva but hey i'm super super uh proud of you killers defenestrators uh in the first season already making history getting to the game um that has eluded so many like myself for years and um it, I, I i used to call my teams next year's champion uh, <laughs> which is what bob lily used to call the, the cowboys for years as they get to the nfl championship game and if you're a real fan of football i'm kind of keep this going here if you're a real a real historian of the actual game and not just the last 20 years, then you'll understand the NFL championship was back when there were two leagues and the, and the NFL champion would then play the AFL champion. And that would be the world champion um, of, of the Super Bowl there. So, uh, but the Cowboys would go over and over and over again and lose to Green Bay. Uh, and that, that they dubbed themselves next year's champions. Yeah. And so um, it's very, very, very similar. Uh, that's how I felt. i never got out of some final round. So, um, it is a special feeling. There's a special feeling in Oldsmobile. Uh, one thing is one thing is guaranteed in La Liga this year is there's going to be a new champion for sure. There there's will be a new be- champion, and another thing is guaranteed for the two of us that we will there is guaranteed money uh, for making it to this to this, to this round. So uh, so we are uh, appreciative of that, and I'm gonna kick it back to you. Sorry. I know that's why that Delta Airlines uh, uh, reschedule didn't, didn't, <laughs> didn't hurt so much because I knew this was coming. Uh, True. Yeah, true. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> true. At any rate, yeah. So the, the 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 episode we were planning to do way back when, mm-hmm. uh, we're gonna do now, and it's just as a propos, uh, if not more. Uh, we we are we are covering uh, a Kevin Costner film, as it were, actually an Ivan Reitman film. Ivan Reitman being the yeah. director, uh, Kevin Costner being the, the the gentleman on the poster, uh, and. Uh, this is their film. first time working together too. I'm pretty sure. So I don't think yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I doubt they'd worked together before. I don't no, I yeah, I was gonna say because Kevin, Kevin was on one end of the uh, the film world, and yeah, you know, having, and then they finally totally different. finally got yeah. together, finally and, got and it worked out. The twilight of uh, Reitman's career. Yes, yes, yeah, it's, it's one of his one of his uh one of his last big ones. You know. Yeah, I um, can see Jason. Right? I can see his son, uh, whose whose debut was a star turn and. Um, in Ghostbusters 2 when he was upset that uh <laughs> was upset that Ghostbusters are there Winston yeah and, yeah. Um, yeah and Ray Stance were at, at his party instead of somebody else instead but, of, instead <laughs> of some hey man they doing yeah. they doing birthday parties now and it don't look good That's and it saying. don't look good yeah but hey yeah. um question for you brother yeah I mean you you in sunny LA you hey skin looking you're looking clean and clear you know saying like you got a fresh cut on Spalding or Genesee or Stanley on one of those streets. <laughs> uh, you know, La Merritt Park, you know, everything cool over there. Hey, oh, know? man. We, so we're, we're at the, just the local coffee shop. Yeah. And I'm not going to make you guess, man, but one of Texas' most famous rappers came through the spot. Okay. Bun, Bun B. Oh, of course, why not? Why wouldn't Bun B be there today? Man, Bun B came through the spot. We were at uh, the, the little coffee joint. I, I can't remember the name of it right now, man, but uh, Tony would know. But yeah, man, we me, that's some of that LA. That's some of that West Coast. LA. And he, you know, we of course we're ear hustling, trying to, you know, you know, I mean, we don't want to bother Bun B, the legend. But uh, you know, he's talking about opening a vegan restaurant in LA. So you, you guys out of LA? 
One more vegan restaurant. One more vegan restaurant, <laughs> but, but with a with a with a port off the twist to it. You know what I mean? I'm sure. I'm sure. I'm sure. <laughs> I'm sure. Well, that, yeah. that's cool. That's cool. Man. Hey, uh, I sound like dude. We'll take. That's cool. That's cool. So, what's like your ultimate goal? You know what I mean? <laughs> Can I say this one? Can I say this one? Domination. Domination. <laughs> Domination. No. Um. Hey. So our last show, and we had a lot. I had a lot of people. I don't know about you. Well, a lot is relative, but I had a number of people that uh, that had opinions that were telling me what their top X Y Zs were. Yes. And yes. Um, as always, we 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 wait. Uh, with bated breath and, and uh, sincere and, and genuine anticipation for the open tab, certainly Reese response and Reese. Um, shout out to Reese. Shout out to Reese and um, I literally Make have three again, bro. I know, I know. I was looking for all my shirts. I I, I put on weight, so all my shirts they don't fit quite. Like they're not camera ready. Um, oh. They're they're but but I'm working on that before buying larger shirts. So um, <laughs> <laughs> it's a struggle, but but. Uh, I was going to say, you know, Reese, Reese mentioned some things about his favorites and, and, you know, did you have any regrets from, from our previous episode? Speaking of being in LA, I got one regret. I left off Snowfall. I don't Ooh. know how I forgot Snowfall. Never Maybe seen out of sight, out of mind. Okay. But that is that. Oh, yeah. But this is the finale though. This is the, the season. Finale. Coming. This is the finale. It's coming. So was it oh for the last five like a top for the last five years either either the top yeah like for, for like the mo- up and comer like it needs it's, it's done them. what i'm trying to say is it's done like there's no it's, it's like up and coming anywhere it's, it's that's just true like, that's true and i think well see a part of it was the last episode of the last season kind of left a little bit of a bad taste in my mouth just a little bit like i wasn't completely satisfied okay but uh i still love that show and yeah. and, and and anticipating the end so that was my big regret. What about you, man? Well, uh, I left off some songs. I did leave off some some show, and I forgot what that show was now. Like, I just completely forgot what the show was. Boss? Oh, yeah, thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Boss. Um, I left off Boss, right? So Kelsey Grammer, uh, it, it, it ended far too soon. Kelsey Grammer as the great Tom Kane, Mayor of Chicago. That one ended far too soon for me. Uh, I... And I, I, it's funny, it's not funny, it's interesting, because today on my Facebook memories, I'd written that I thought Kelsey Grammer was born to play Fraser Crane. And in actuality, I think he's born to play Tom Kane. Uh, because, you know, I think what most people think Fraser, uh, uh, Kelsey Grammer, you really think Fraser, and that's understandable, completely, I get it, that's, that's like the, the role that would define his life. But I'm, if you want, but Fraser is kind of, is a, a nice guy, he's, you know, he's a psychiatrist. He's a Harvard grad. He's 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 cooler in his own way. You know, he's stylish and all this. Tom Kane is a ruthless, ruthless Chicago boss politician. And in the in the in the great lineage of of um, of Mayor Daley and, and Mayor Washington and and others, uh, he's he is a tough city boss mm-hmm. and. And from that time when there were city bosses, and there's only two two seasons of this thing, man. I think it's 20 episodes, but it is a delight. Okay, it's 20 hours that are worth it. And um, I forgot to add that as a show that I thought was gone too soon, unfortunately, on a list. And I added a lot of shows gone too soon, but yeah. I, I, I got to be honest with you, there was nothing better than that. Uh, for the songs, I um, I forgot uh, I forgot "Bosom Buddies," "My Life" by yeah. William Joel. Uh, by Billy Joel. Billy Joel, uh, love that song. Love that one. Uh, I and I'm sure we mentioned "Welcome Back, Kata, Mr. Kata." Yeah. yeah. But um, but nonetheless, I um, I I I'm proud of the work we did last week. And oh yeah. Um, and so, you know, that's kind of where I am with it. Um, I, oh oh, I don't think I did the song for what's happening, and I I loved the song for what's happening. And um, I don't know what it's called, other than the song for what's happening, the theme for what's for what's happening, but it's constantly playing in my head. So, uh, oh yeah, that was playing in mine too. <laughs> yeah, that was for Shay. That was for Shay and Nina. Uh, <laughs> but uh, sorry. Okay, so uh, see, we were trying to get the a truck. Anyway, um, she will appreciate it. I'm in her office, so she, you know. I'm sure. <laughs> I'm sure. Okay. So um, 
having having said that, uh, did you have any other regrets? Uh, not necessarily a regrets, but I did discover a show, you know, as we do for, for binging uh, in, in, the, in the holiday period, uh, Grand Crew. Uh, okay. I started to watch that was that. the one that was on NBC for a while, right? Yeah. It's, it's gone though, right? We don't know. It's like, it's kind of in the ether. Like they haven't officially canceled it, but okay. I mean, it's been it a while. It looked good. It looked good. They, they pushed it, it a lot. It is hilarious. They put, I watched, I watched like, I probably watched like two, three episodes. They pushed it a lot. They did. It they had did. a lot of, it had a lot of publicity. I mean, like, you know, some shows they don't, but it had a lot of publicity. Yeah, they, they uh, definitely gave it the old college try in terms of like advertising and, you know, uh, we're going to make this thing work. And then, and then they didn't. But it was hilarious. I, I really enjoyed it. Really enjoyed Good. it. So, uh, but yeah, that's that's about it for me, man. You know, uh, I think, you know, we always appreciate Reese because Reese brings a perspective uh, that that we we don't always think about. You know what I mean? And so I uh, appreciate having his his voice in there, especially him caping real hard for uh, Game of Thrones. You know, Reese, we, we, we see you, Maurice. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> most definitely. <laughs> yeah, man. And then uh, at some point, we'll have to circle back uh, on one of our favorite franchises, because I'm sure uh, you've had the opportunity, as our family has, to uh, watch at least a few episodes of the uh, Best Man uh, final chapter. I am not. I, I'm not doing it till I uh, finish editing all my photos. So I've got okay. two more. Oh, gosh. Sorry. I got two more things to edit, and uh, then I will be done with that. So sorry about that. Oh, you good, man. Hey, look, hey, it, it is what you think it is. So. And that's all. Uh, uh, that's what I heard. And uh, so very happy for my main man, um, Malcolm D. Lee. Friend of the, uh, friend of the show. Friend of the, friend show. Of the show. Yeah, friend of the show. Uh, Morehouse dad. So uh, we love it. And we're happy for him. Yeah, so, yes. You did, you did your thing. You did your thug dizzle on that, uh, Brother Lee. Yes. So without any further uh, any further ado, we're going to jump into today's, uh, today's movie. Today's movie, today's as we special. mentioned, uh, Ivan Reitman uh, directed uh, and, and, and Kevin Costner starring along with Jennifer Garner and, and a few other luminaries that we'll mention, I'm sure. Uh, a great, great, great airplane film specifically, but and I'm sure Absolutely. we will categorize this in other ways. <laughs> uh, but uh, overall... We should have, have a show on airplane movies, by the way, but go, go ahead, I'm sorry. <laughs> we should have a show on airplane movies, for real. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, man, and, and this, would, this would definitely pe- feature prominently again. Uh, 2014's Draft day, draft day. Um, excellent film, Joe. How did it come into your your worldview? How did you come about finding about? Uh, I thought it was a joke. I, it, you know, they they advertised it in the summer. I, I think when was this released? Um, it was like, yeah, it was April, at least in April. So it was during March Madness. That's what it was. They advertised it during March Madness, and I thought it was kind of a joke. So it would be around draft day. I thought it was like, you know, they were they were, they were kidding. You know, I thought it was like an elaborate thing then I realized it was real and uh so you know it was around the 2014 draft my daughter was born April 25th 2014 um and either I think she was born before right after the draft I think she it was like right after the draft she was born um right after the draft or right before the she was born right before the draft I think actually I'm sorry uh but but either way, um, I, I, I vividly recall the draft that year, though. She was, I know she was, anyway, it's not important. Uh, I went to a, a, a ritual service uh, later that month. Mm-hmm. She was a baby. It was the first place I went to after she became, after she was born. Of course. So, uh, I, so I vividly recall, but it was draft night. It was the same thing as draft night. Um, but yeah, so it, they did some good advertising. We had Costner. It was an Ivan Reitman movie. It was about draft day, released in April, the draft month. Yeah, who's who's gonna miss that, right? So, yeah. but I didn't go see it in the theater, so I did miss that. I saw it on an airplane. <laughs> of course, you did. So, you calling it an airplane movie? Then me seeing it on an airplane—it's brilliant and hilarious and on point. And I didn't tell you that before. So, yeah, that's where I saw it on an airplane. It it really is. I mean, all right. So, my first time seeing it was on a flight as well. <laughs> uh, you know, it was one of my international flights. I'm sure, like either yeah. Going or like Taiwan yeah. or Thailand, one of those Lord, places, Amsterdam, something. But like, because it, it's it's the perfect length. Yeah, it's and and we'll uh, you know that's a great idea. We're gonna we're gonna have to talk about airplane movies at some point uh, because this is this is this is the the quintessential one. But yeah, I I too missed it during the wide release. Uh, it made twenty eight million uh, off of a I think like a uh, six hundred 
Oh no, no, I'm not sure. Twenty-five million dollar budget. Was it? It was. It was a multi-million dollar budget. I'm sure. It was twenty-five million dollar budget, and it made well according to Wikipedia twenty-nine point five. Twenty-nine. Okay. It made money. It made, it made money. money. It it made a return on this investment. It did. But uh, yeah, you know, um, uh, didn't see it in the theater, but definitely saw it in its in its afterlife on an airplane. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, you know, it's it's a nice taut film that 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 you know will get you keep your attention and 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 you know, uh, especially for a sports fan like you and I. Uh, yeah. definitely will will have some talking points. And I think that's what makes it such a rewatchable movie, such a, a film that you can go back definitely. to. Uh, and, 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 and it, you know, kind of outlives its life as an airplane movie and, and then becomes just kind of a a a, a, um, a tradition movie, as it were. Uh, it is. And it, it's, that, ah, look, oh boy, you are on fire today. You're throwing rocks to me. All right. So, um, so it is a tradition for me because when I'm in a football fix in the summer, and I, I need to, I need a little bit of NFL in my life. Uh, I watch this movie in the summertime, and it really, it really gets me ready and hyped up for the uh, for the specter and the hope that the Falcons will have a good year. Yeah. Um, um, it, 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 good lord, I can't even. I, I'm not even going there today. I was. It was so painful to watch that game. Um, I was like, I played for NFL Plus for this. Like, like. <laughs> mm. No. Anyway, it is a tradition for me, though, to watch this probably two or three times throughout the year, but definitely in the summertime. Uh, and um, kind of like I watch the league uh, yeah. on FX yeah, uh, right around draft, you know, around draft time or when I'm really missing the NFL, too. So th- this definitely helps to fill a void. It's definitely, helps, you know, the league has like six seasons. This is, you know, 110 minutes, but it definitely helps to fill a void as well. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. From, absolutely. from a starving, deserving fan base point of view. <laughs> hey, man, you know, <laughs> we need we we are a fan base that, that rewards, uh, and and we are a fan base that that you know is loyal. We deserve stuff like this every now and again. You know what I mean? I agree. So, we are the GBs. Yeah. 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 So, what are the little things that stand out to you in this film, Joe? What are the the little things for you? I really love the um the fact that the the main team was the Cleveland Browns. Look, if you haven't seen it, I'm sorry. But the main team was the Cleveland Browns. Shout out um, to Cassie David. Shout out. Pff, huge. Cassie David. Uh, shout out to Cassie, um, Allison, and um, Akilah David uh, as well, who I'm sure is, is going to be a huge Browns fan. She can't help it. Oh, yeah. uh, baby girl Akilah. Uh, what I was going to say, though, is that I like the choice of teams that are in the, um, that are, that are in the centerpiece of the, the deals and the deal making. Mm-hmm. And the fact that it's kind of like, okay, it's somewhat believable. I love the multiculturalism mm-hmm. in it as well. I couldn't quite tell what, I can't think of the brother's name right now. I couldn't quite tell what the brother in St. Louis, what his, in St. Louis, in Seattle, I couldn't quite tell what his role was. Like, was he the GM? Was he the, uh, he wasn't the owner. You know what I mean? I couldn't, yeah. quite, I couldn't quite tell what was going on there. Yeah. But, like but, Chopin um, Bride. I think he was just Chopin Bride. Yeah, Chopin Bride. I couldn't quite, you think he was what? Team president? The president, like, you know, like kind of. And then another guy was a GM. Yeah, yeah. and another guy was a GM. But they yeah. were working together. Yeah. You know, but they, so they had a brother in the room. They always had brothers in the room. They're brothers in yeah. the room in Cleveland. They're, they're, and that, that's a little thing, but it was very big for me from a, pre, from a you know, representation standpoint. Brothers yeah. in the room in Kansas City. You know, brothers, just brothers in the room in Jacksonville. When they, and you got to have a young GM who's, oh, God, what am I doing? Ah! You know? Yeah. I thought that was extremely realistic. Now, we don't normally see that. You know, you normally see the draft from like this. They're looking, you know, wearing suits. They're looking at everything. Cool, whatever. I just remember it took me back to the, <laughs> um, to the 90 draft for Dallas. I'm sorry, I'm just going to, I got to, yeah. Too bad the 90 draft for Dallas when they they took Emmett and then they got Russell, they got Russell Maryland and Emmett and they got all these picks after the Russell, after the Herschel Walker trade. And they turned it into basically a dynasty there. Uh, and the whole, the, the, it's interesting. That was essentially the premise, but they didn't, but they didn't allude to it, nor gave yeah. it no respect, partly because it was Dallas. What they do, you know, they, Dallas is mentioned in, in the film, of course, because the coach came from Dallas, but it like the whole premise that on draft day, you can really set up your team. If you have enough picks, you could, you should be able to set up your team in a way that they're there for a while. And granted, 90 was before heavy free agency and all that kind of stuff too. But but still, I mean, it's like, well, what is the most famous, what is one of the most famous draft days ever? It's because they have all these picks because of this. But it is what it is. 
but I really like the multiculturalism uh, for those organizations. I liked that it. it was like teams that it was Kansas City before Mahomes was there. You mm-hmm. know, it was like Seattle when it was hot. Like Seattle was got to be was like it was happening for Seattle at the time. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but they, they're mentioned Jacksonville is we're always waiting for Jacksonville. It's like me yeah. in fantasy football. We're always waiting for Jacksonville to be the next, you know, but, um, and then it's Cleveland, which is just so put upon and, you know, just, just, just tortured fan base. Um, and so I really appreciated that the, all those teams got that love like that. And you threw yeah. in one NFC, but everybody else is AFC, um, yeah. you know, and, and the NFC guy and me, I'm like, where, where are we? But, but um, I really like that. Also the interplay, the historical stuff was cool. I'm going to get to my gripes about that too, though. Uh, but I realize it's not for – every fan is not like you and me. Right. Every football fan is not like you and me. We know that, right? Right. right. So right. – uh, but but I thought – and then another little thing for me was just the different uh, – all the number of people in an organization who never hit the field. I think you see that you have a better understanding for that yeah. at the time. Uh, yeah. From the top, from the very top to the bottom. And I'm going to say this one little thing. I love this. Frank Langella, as the owner, when he comes on the when he gets to the draft floor, and he says, "I'm not sitting here," right? Like he would never deign to be uh, with the people um, mm-hmm. below, even though he's the owner of the Cleveland Browns, which which you would think is one of the most blue collar. That's the people's team, right? <laughs> yeah, like, exactly, fan base amazing, of the world. But right? he played it well as an NFL owner. Uh, yeah. Great cameos as well. So yeah. I'm going to kick it over to you. What are the little things for you? Yeah, so I mean, for me, you hit on one of mine, which is the 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 organizational structure of a football team. I think that this movie really, uh, without hitting you over the head with it, shows yeah. you how a team is made, how a squad is put together, uh, who's involved in it, who has a say and who doesn't have a say, right. which is you know I think it's hugely important. I think that people kind of get into this thing where they think it's just one or two people making a decision. And it's not. I mean, the position coaches had something to say about it. You know what I mean? Like the head coach definitely had something to say about it, right, right. Um, you know, and, and and made his voice known. I mean, he was, you know, he was he was um, a, a, a guy that was following in large footsteps. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that yeah. was something like to your point about Dallas that was very similar to that situation as well. You know, right. Right. Um, it's right after Landry. Yeah. Hey, man, you know, Jimmy Jones coming or Jimmy Johnson coming in after Landry. You know what I mean? Like he's he's trying to make his his name. And so right. this this draft pick was it, is crucially important for Dennis Leary, who was in his you know I mean like I guess this is the end of his 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 little bag here where he was you know right. making a a lot of great great like unsung uh, uh, cameo appearances and or uh, 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 roles you know I mean like you know I don't see him a whole lot anymore anyway but um, he was great as the as the head coach uh, and and the organization itself and then like you know everybody within the organization has their guy, you know what I mean? And it has their in. And I mean, it just was, was, it, it hit on that very well. Uh, you know, the city that was supposed to be represented in this, this, this movie. Do you, are you look at you. Look at you. That's my boy. That's my boy. Buffalo. Buffalo, Buffalo was supposed that. to be the city. And, 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 and you know, uh, there weren't enough incentives for filming in Buffalo as opposed to filming in Cleveland. So, you know, uh, but well, they filmed in Cleveland. Pro- so that was at the facility. They filmed in Cleveland proper. They didn't they, make that. They, they filmed in, in Ohio proper. And now I don't know if they filmed in the actual Cleveland facilities, but they filmed. In I've Ohio. been trying to find it. I can't, I, I've had a hard time finding. They um, definitely filmed in Ohio for okay. sure. Uh, and, 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 you know, I mean, again, it was supposed to be, uh, it was supposed to be the Cleveland or the Buffalo bills uh, who, you know, again, when, to your point though, Joe, another one of those unsung franchises that the NFL really wants, you know, I mean, it's, you can almost see it's desperate to to have this 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 franchise do something great. You know how they pump up Josh Allen and all these guys. You know they want. Yeah, I mean, I, I get it. I get yeah, it. They 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 got to. They got to help out that that small market. But uh, you know, they they become they become one of those uh, loyal cities, and and they get rewarded for their loyalty. Um, and they almost had this film, um, which you know would have. I mean, who knows what. I don't think it makes too much of a difference from a, a NFL standpoint, but uh, from an NFL propaganda standpoint, it, it, you know, it helps to be featured in this kind of stuff. Uh, you know, it's a shame that any, any time they show the Falcons, it felt like, um, you know, and watching the best man Falcons always on the losing end, but that's, that's neither here nor there. You know, we, we, <laughs> we perpetuate what we want to perpetuate. Uh, True. I, I also enjoy the acting performances from, uh, from athletes and specifically from uh, Aaron Foster, uh, you know, I thought that that it was it was cool to feature uh, him. I wish that they had more real athletes involved yeah. in the production. 
Yeah. Uh, but but to see, you know, I mean, to see an actual get an, a, a young athlete at the time, I think Aaron Foster had just finished uh, 2014. He was just finishing his career or was, I don't know. I, I, he was still around a little bit. Um, still around a little bit. I thought I, 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 I look at it. You're probably right. Everything you're I'm gonna just going. You're probably right. So he came into the league in 2009 and 2016. He finished. So he was, so he was in the twilight. So he, he could he could take he could take the spring off and do a movie. He, he could do that. Yeah, and the yeah off absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. But I thought he like Ray Allen play. after after rookie year, you know, right. taking his rookie summer and, and doing the doing. Um, he got game. Right. But I thought he did. I thought he did a, a fantastic job. And I wish they had had more actual like players. Like, you know, but and, but, you know, the, the guy who played Bo Callahan, to me, he was believable. He looked oh, yeah. like a quarterback. No, uh, he definitely I, he definitely yeah. looked like the the Will Levis, the the the, you know, it is a great name. Bo yeah. Callahan. Bo Callahan. Yeah. It's, it's just a great name to me. It I, is, I, it is, I was like, oh, this, this is very believable. This is it is, uh, it is a it is a football name. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes, it is. Yes. 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 But, um, you know, I mean, uh, I think that pretty much covers my little things about this film. Uh, I want to kind of transition into the into the uh, the unsung heroes, because I think this one is kind of we will have a lot of robust discussion here. Who are the unsung heroes for you, Joe? Well, uh, I'm trying to look the kids. name up. The uh, well, Allie, Allie was an unsung hero. Jennifer Garner playing Allie, okay. which, of course, she's a woman and a football team. Oh, we're doing something different. Right. Um, which which I'm saying it like that's cliche to me. Uh -huh. But th there are women that work in all these organizations. Every single yep. one of these organizations has, yep. and most of them are top ranking women making major decisions. I loved it for the fact that there was representation. I, I, I hate she was the only one. Um, yeah. But I under kind of understand. What, and then she's the one, of course, that's involved with the GM. So it's like, okay, do we need that? I, I don't know, but we got it, right? But mm -hmm. I thought she was, she was always professional. She always knew her stuff, of course, because she's the yeah. woman, right? So yeah. she always knew her stuff, always knew the numbers, you know, everything. And if it weren't for her, she would the deals wouldn't have worked. Like doing yeah. the deals wouldn't have worked because she had to do the math on making sure all that kind of stuff worked. So to me, she was definitely an unsung hero. Uh, another one of the unsung heroes for me was um, oh, now I can't think. Of, oh, I've got to get the kid's name. Um, well, whoever played the uh, the intern. I thought I thought because he kept being in the wrong. <laughs> the kid was everywhere um, at the wrong time, all, usually. Yeah. And and, Rick and the so intern. I'm sorry. <laughs> Rick the intern. <laughs> Rick the thank you, Rick the intern. Um, I don't Rick think just. He, I don't think I he's think been he's in much. Gri he's Griffin Newman. I don't think he's been in a whole lot at all. It's fine. It's fine. Griffin Newman. He's somebody's kid. And um, but Griffin Griffin he gave. A, I thought he gave a nice performance. He was around at certain times. It was like he grew up in one day at the organization uh, and it was like a heck of a day to be starting and uh, I just liked him as a little comedic uh, thing there Ellen Burstyn I mean she's she's Ellen Ellen Burstyn I mean she can do anything and I love her I've loved her roles the last 20 years but yeah she just a, she comes in does a day and gets out of the way you know yeah. or do that in two days and gets out of the way yeah. but hilarious um a lot of it's cliche but still I thought she was hilarious in that as well um and I'm gonna leave the rest for you well, I mean, you know, I got my man in, in my, my my screenshot here. Uh, my man Chadwick Boseman, man, is Monte yeah. Mac. Monte Mac. I think he was he was an excellent representation of what like the 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 you know that guy that is that's trying to make a name for himself yeah. as a prospect coming out of you know out of Ohio State. We'll forgive him for that. Uh, <laughs> but the hometown guy, you know True. what I mean? That's exactly. Like, and 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 you know, I mean, this uh, LeBron is still fresh in everybody's minds. Uh, as a matter of fact, this is when he came back, like right around the time where he, he yeah. was starting to come back. Well, no, he was in Miami. He was, he in, was Miami. in Miami then. Wait, when did Miami, when did he come back? He came back in 20 years. In 11. No, in 11. In 10. He came back in 10. He oh, came back. To Cleveland. To Cleveland. Yeah, I think like 15, 16. Yes. 15 and 16. Right. Yeah. yeah so, yeah, yeah. you know, but they still have this hometown, you know, homegrown thing. And, 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 and you know, he's trying again. Like he's got a family to feed, but he also yeah. knows his worth. He knows that, you know, like, I mean, he should be the number one pick, right? Yeah. yeah. You know, and, and 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 they should pick him. But, uh, you know, the odds are against it. And, you know, he's selling himself, trying to get that spot, trying to get the number one spot, man. And, mm -hmm. and, and, and he ends up doing it the right way. You know, he's made friends with, with Kevin Costner, as it were, because this happens. Yeah. I mean, players 
ingratiate themselves to, to the right people. Well, the GMs are the <laughs> That's that's who that's, that's the point. That's who drafts you. Side. Right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And so, you know, I mean, he 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 did it. He had the, the baller phone with the the the, the brass knuckles, man, <laughs> and the and the, the, the six who, shooter watch. Who's, t- who's taking his phone at Ohio State? Who who would be the fool who walks up to try to take Vontae Mack's phone at Ohio State? Uh, idiot, <laughs> true, 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 true. <laughs> an idiot, yeah, Truly man. Yeah. But like you know, if you notice, everybody else had somebody representing them. Like you know, uh, 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 Jennings had his dad. You know what I mean? Yeah. Terry Crews. Uh, 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 Bo had his dad and had Puffy. You know what I mean? Yeah, his agent. Yeah, yeah. But like, I mean, you know, I'm sure there was some agent somewhere uh, representing uh, Fonte Mack. The number one. Well, he was sitting next to him on the couch. Um, yeah. So Fonte was sitting next to the to the you know, the, the pretty co-ed and then on his left and then his agent was right there, uh, the chubby guy on his right um, yeah. as well. So, but we don't see him until he gets a call. He went, he, he, says, he says, it's going to be a long night. Like yeah. Vontae, Vontae was taking it in his own hands. Yeah. Taking his yeah. his own hands. Yeah. He did, he and you did, know, I'm not, you know, I'm not the biggest Chadwick Bozeman fan. I know you are. But, but I, I'm a huge, I'm very, I'm objective. And, yeah. uh, and I can look at this objectively. This may be, my favorite, uh, other than the Five Bloods, the Five Bloods, this may be my favorite of his performances. Yeah. Because even though I hate his, he does voices, but we're gonna keep this positive right now. Um, but this may be the favorite of my of his performances for me. Yeah. Because I he was so believable in this role, and yeah. um, and he came with the passion and all the other stuff that comes with it. But this is the kind of guy you want on your team as a part of your organization to build culture with. Yeah. Um, this is the kind of character. Fonte Mack is a person who's gonna be big in the community, he's gonna be big on the team, he's gonna kill himself for you. This is this is Micah Parsons. This is this is Micah Parsons. Yeah, he just shuts up about certain things. But this is Micah Parsons. What did he just say? Stay off Twitter. This is Micah Parsons. This is <laughs> you know, this is Khalil Mack. Yeah. You know, this is JJ Watt. This yeah. is JJ Watt who just announced his retirement. Yeah, the guy was huge in every community. First ballot Hall of Famer. First first ballot, but huge in every community he was in. You yeah. know, very, very active. And this is that guy. This is that guy. And yeah. Pastor, being a good GM, saw that. Yeah. And he just took conviction to the win. And I'm going to get a kind of person I can build, build a new culture around. And so, yeah. and that, and I, I think that's, that's owed in great part to the outstanding performance from Chadwick Bozeman. Yeah. So he, yeah. yeah I, I'm with you. I'm with you. I got one more. And that's my main man, Sam Elliott. Uh, I as, love Sam. As, I mean, as, everything. as the coach of uh, University of Wisconsin, like yeah. you know, so there's a subtle art to selling your player and not selling your player, and 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 you know, giving people the truth about who you have, you know what I mean? Because like, I'm a letter writer. I write a ton of letters uh, mm-hmm. for for the School of Medicine, and I want all of my 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 kids to get jobs, right? Right. But you also got to let people know what they're getting. <laughs> So that you know your reputation still maintains, and your still, word, your word is not a rubber stamp. Your word correct. is seen as something with this discerning. Yeah. Correct, yeah. exactly, yeah. exactly. And I thought Sam Elliott played that role to a T in terms of like how he talked about Bo Callahan and and and, and brother. If you don't think that that these conversations are happening, <laughs> and this is what I think this generation doesn't really. I'm, I'm becoming that guy that's going to talk and, and rant about this, but I'm going to do it anyway. I don't think this generation really understands that hey, we be talking, you know what I mean? And, 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 uh-huh. you know, you, you, these, these, these connections, like my connections matter more than the next Johnny come lately student, you know what I mean? So I'm going to, to preserve my, my reputation uh, while finding you a job. And I think that that was, I, I appreciated that. I thought that was very well represented uh, in this film. So my man, Sam Elliott as the coach, uh, you know, like people talk about does Nick Saban really love those kids. I mean, to an extent, yeah. But also, Nick Saban's got to be Nick Saban, and you got to be able to trust his word and trust who he is, and and trust that he, you know, he's going to sell you uh, the the right player for the right position in the right time. You know what I mean? Right. And uh, I think that the Sam Elliott uh, did that uh, uh, very sadly. I thought that that part was written very well, uh, and I thought that you know they picked the right guy to play it. Uh, Cast I'm perfectly. Who else would you like to see as as a, as a college coach? Though? Who else would you? Who else do you think would have done that? Other actors? Yeah. Um, I mean Ed Harris. Yeah, yeah. I has he played a coach it's, yet? Not that I'm aware of. Ed Harris, basically the guy who plays the the GM in in uh, in Seattle, is a Ed Harris is a poor man's Ed Harris. Yes. Uh, and all yes. and all since, um, 
Patrick Saint Esprit as Tom Michaels. He's he's in my opinion, he's a poor man's Ed Harris. He's channeling some Ed Harrisism. He's a lot of Ed Harris in that, <laughs> and really like Ed Harris in um, what the heck is that? Uh, the Rock. Yeah. Um, Ed Harris says you know the crazy Colonel uh, yeah. or General, whatever he was. Yeah. Uh, but but um, yeah, I think Ed Harris could have played the coach too. And, and John Hamm. Yeah, he could have done that without question. Well, after I just finished Top Gun, I, I can definitely see that. John Hamm, uh, he could have played the coach, no question. Yeah. Yeah. Um, he was still. Who, 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 what other? Who? I, I'm just curious. I I don't know. I still would have maybe. I I would have being Ivan Reitman. You could pretty much get anybody to come be in your movie. Yeah. I might I might have coaxed Gene Hackman to come out for like oh. Gene Hackman to come out for like one day and uh, stand there, you know, in a Wisconsin shirt. And uh, and and I think he can deliver the, exactly the same lines. Um, maybe, maybe. Um, oh, what's my man's name? Uh, I can't think of his name now. Oh gosh. Um, he was on news radio. He's a, he's an amazing character actor. News radio, Boardwalk Empire. Uh, he was he was um, he was the guy in um, he's the guy in uh, Office Space. Uh, who's gonna who blows up the place? Steve. Um, Steven Steven Root. Root. I might I might get Stephen Root to add a little comedy to it. I just I just yeah. might get Stephen Root to add a little comedy to it. But you know, Sam Elliott, man, I I watch him read the phone book. I mean, Sam Elliott's just he's an institution, man. Yeah. And uh he only gets better with time. And so, you know, I thought he was I might even get Kurt Russell. I think Kurt Russell could have played it. You know, uh, that's some, interesting. I I can see Kurt Russell as a coach. Yeah, I think he played football, and that was there was a real big, it was a big decision he had to make if he was gonna do that or or you know, or go to the league or go to the league or or continue acting, but I, I I think Kurt Russell could have could have pulled that off too. Uh, mm. But I'm just curious um, because it's a great, it's a juicy morsel of a role that you do one day's work on and call it a day, you know. And and they, and they did one day's of work and and you get paid whatever you get paid. Uh, but you're gonna have a right movie, and so you know, yeah, that was it for me. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. Okay, okay, okay. So, uh, what kind of nitpicks do you have about the film? Um. Okay. Some of the stories. Like when they stop in the middle, like, oh, remember, remember when Jim? So Joe Montana and Kevin Costner to me is the same person. Like I, I, I've uh, thought this for a long time. Same butt cut hair uh, for a long time. Uh, you know, like like, like uh, Mark Harmon butt cut. Um, butt cut. <laughs> he's not. A, it's like a. It's, here, it's like a. Butt, yeah, it's yeah, a butt yeah. That's, no, that's what it is. Yeah, it's the yeah. butt cut, right? Uh, but Joe Montana and Costner to me are like like two sides of the same coin. Yeah. Okay, they really are yeah. the same point. You know, the, the, the Joe Montana of actors and, and Joe Montana's the Kevin Costner of quarterbacks. Absolutely. Clooney could have been a coach too, by the way. Um, I think Clooney <laughs> would have been a heck of a coach too. Um, yeah. not as Leary. I think Leary kills it. Leary is Leary is the coach. I could see Pitt, maybe. I could maybe see Pitt. I know yeah. it'd be comical, but I could see Pitt doing it after I just finished um Burn After Reading. Okay, or, you know, I could see Pitt doing that because Pitt is money got ball, right? Yeah, of course. But he's yeah. got he's got range. He's got range. He, I think yeah. he could he could have played Leary's character. But yeah, sure. uh, but nonetheless, and I know Clooney could have, I Clooney could kill that too. But I like Leary because Leary like needs it more. Um, and it's just a little bit of that, that asshole in him that he's yeah. just gotta act a certain way. But anyway, back to this. Um, I thought the stories were a little cliche. So him going for a remember, remember Joe Montana looking down at hey, isn't that John Candy? You know, it's like, huh? What are you talking about? To me, the best the best thing about cool and calm under pressure is the picture of Walsh in the locker room, in the middle of his players, with his head, his his his. To me, I I channel that photograph. Yeah. When I worked at Morehouse College, and it was a big event. It was homecoming, count in the dark reunion. Any of those big events, NSO, and I had to find a place of calm. I would listen. So Donnie McClurkin and, 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 and Kirk Franklin and some Shirley Caesar, I would go to a quiet place and I would think about that photo of Walsh laid out chilling because to me, it was like, I've done the work. We're prepared. We just got to go out and execute. Like I've done everything I could do. We just got to go out and execute. Right. Um, and, and to me, that was, that's a better story. Whatever, whatever. Uh, but I thought the stories were kind of cliche. Uh, I thought the having to run into the room and just just tell her how you feel. Like, stop being. You're 50. You're having a kid. You're 50. You're having a baby. 50. Um, stop. <laughs> just just tell her how you feel. Closer you know, I get to it, 
<laughs> hey, I know. I say that, but, you know, shoot, I could have a baby 50. <laughs> I, I, I'm telling you. But he's having his first, you know, I guess you would be too. But uh, except for you, right? You can have baby whatever you want. <laughs> but, but, but still, this character, it's like, bro, you know, he's not 50. He's like almost 60. Let's be yeah. honest. It's Costner here yeah. with like a, a, a barely 37, 38 Jennifer Garner. You know, it only works because they put some stuff in his hair, really. And he had to work out just to get down to where he was. So that's yeah. that's why it works. But it just, their relationship seemed clunky to me. Yeah. It, and I didn't think it would end well. So that that was a nitpick for me. Um, the other, the other, uh, the only other nitpick I had was the, the, little comedic stuff it went like a little too far in the in the draft room but yeah. you know the guy my main my mainest main man who plays jonah and i can't never think of his name i'm even gonna look it up but he's gonna be jonah jonah ryan uh, oh, having, uh, uh timothy simons yeah timothy simons having simons in 2014 in that in that movie was like a wink to the rest of us like you're watching the funniest show on television we're gonna give you the funniest guy on the funniest show on that television and we're going to put him in this movie right now. Which also tells me Simon's is smart and takes great roles. So I didn't mind him being in it, but I was like, some of the jokes were kind of whatever. And then he gets serious on you. And it's like, am I watching him or is it Jonah being serious? Like, I, I would get, I got confused. I'll be honest. I, I, got, I got confused every now and then when I watch it. Um, other than that, you know, I think the only other nitpick, I don't know enough about how these draft proceedings work. So it just... It was all, and I know it's a movie, so it's going to be all perfect, but it just seemed far too perfect that over and over and over again, no matter what the move was, it worked. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it, oh, there was never something that got in their way yeah. of, of the thing working, which I was like, that's, that's not real. And football yeah. is real. Yeah. Football is, football is one second too early, one second too late, and you don't have the immaculate reception. You don't right. have a career built on a play. Right. And you know what's crazy to me about that magnet reception too? They didn't even go to Super they didn't go to Super Bowl that year. They didn't even go to they didn't go to the Super Bowl that year. You know how I you know how I think they didn't go to the dag on Super Bowl that year. It was a game to get to the championship game. Yeah. It wasn't yeah. even like yeah I half my life well no most of my life until the other day it didn't even hit me. That was a Saints game. Dolphins won that year. What, what are you doing? They beat the they beat the Vikings. They I it was but it was their first playoff win ever, you know, and yeah. and whatever else. But it started, it was enough. It was like when the 85 Bears lost to the the 84 Bears lost to the 80, stay with me, lost to the 84 Niners in the title game. Yeah. Wearing all white. They wore the all yeah. white, which they never wore again. Yeah. All white. Yeah. And they lost that title game. But then the next year they were like, all right. Yeah. All right. Same thing with the back. Giants the next year. The Giants lost to the Bears. Like a lot of yeah. that anointing. Yeah, it's, it's it, or it's it's the NBA. It's oh yeah. god. It's either yeah. the Celtics or the Pistons. It's one of the two yeah. over and over again. And occasionally we'll throw. And then it was the Bulls. Yeah. And then you know it, that's how it works. You know that's yeah. how it works. But that, yeah. that was those were the, those were nitpicks for me. By you. So I mean I mean and, and I guess this is the time where we talk about. I mean this is the central premise of the film. But that draft day trade, man, like. I mean, it was a lot of mental gymnastics, man. It was, I don't want to say it was tenant level of thinking, <laughs> but there was a right. lot that, that happened there, man. And, 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 you know, I mean, to trade up, get the number one pick, right? Um, and then, you know, kind of have one way of thinking and then to be able to like have your cake and eat it too and get all the players you wanted to get. And then they still ended up getting the guy they wanted. You know, it just like, it was a lot. It was a lot of, you know, you know, and then to throw in the punter, like, I'm trying to think of when. <laughs> so, so you mentioned, you mentioned the crazy, uh, the, the, the Dallas trade, right? Yeah. And, and that's one of the, I mean, I, I wouldn't necessarily say it was, it was a train trade. robbery. If they stole, it was train robbery. It was absolute train robbery. Okay. Well, there it is. I, you know, I think back to. Never like, should have got, I'm sorry. Never should have gotten that many picks. Conditional pick for this guy. It was like nine years in the in playing, play, seven years playing pro ball. Yeah, yeah, he was on the tail end of of a, yeah, yeah, and he had already, yeah, exactly. And I'm glad you put it that way, a pro ball because he had played in, in New Jersey all that exactly. time, right? Exactly. So, um, but yeah, like the Falcons had a a, a trade involving the Browns. Um, uh, you know, I, I I think that that's kind of similar to Julio trade. Um, 
you know, but even then, the Browns still got something out of that. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I can't think of any other, like, I mean, I, I know some tra- some draft day blunders, like the, the Minnesota blunder, you know, uh, back-to-back blunders where they let the time run out the one year and, and you know, but I just can't. Are we on the board? Are we drafting? Wait, are we drafting right now? Are we on the board? That right. part, that part, but that was cool. I think that that might happen if you're losing your, your mind over the fact that your first five, but look, look, they're doing draft analysis right now, Calvin. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. There's, like, there's no scenario. I mean, the seeding might change a little bit, but we're looking at you, the the players are the players. So that doesn't make speak, sense. I can't speak to any other like fantasy drafter, for instance. But for me, I got a plan B, a plan C. Like if 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 Coleman does this, then I'm doing this. If you know if Bryce does this, but ours is a draft. Ours is an auction, which is which is which is even crazier. Right. At least in the NFL, you know, and you're a kid, you think they just pick it out of a hat. Oh, I'm gonna, I like him. I'm gonna pick him in. No, we've already. I've already signed him. He has a he has a contract. You know, we know who you know. Those we know who the number one pick in the draft is. Like unlike unlike, um, or no, unlike uh, like Jerry Maguire. You know where, where which is crazy that Jerry Maguire is like. Well, this is fourteen. So this is nine years prior. It makes you but and they have a draft scene. A draft, a draft scene. They make you believe that it just kind of happens, and in some cases it does. Mm-hmm. Right, whatever. But many times these deals are already done the night before. They're they're done weeks before. They like they knew they knew they were taking name. The Jets knew they were taking Namath when he was at Bama. They came to see him. You know what I'm saying? That's why he went to the damn on NFL because the the NFL had a, it was like some team and he didn't want to go to that team. They didn't they weren't gonna. That, that's what I'm trying to say. They weren't gonna. He wanted a hundred thousand dollars. He wanted a car. They're like no 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 no. We're not gonna, we're not doing that. We're not gonna do that. And so. He goes to another team. He makes the deal. The deal is done. You know, they knew they were taking names. It's it's, 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 it's kind of, I don't know, the misnomer is out there. Now you realize, like, okay, this is, this is the business of it is, is, is much different. And the analysis, you would think with the analysis that you couldn't catch someone slipping. You would think that with all those minds in the room. But, mm-hmm. okay. It just, it just was, yeah, man. It was, it, you know, I me. Mean, it was entertaining, but it's one of those things where you don't want to overthink. And uh, being a, a football, you know, connoisseur, you know, yeah. you we're not experts, need... but we're expert yeah. watchers. We're expert watchers. We're but expert that, watchers. Exactly. That exactly. that aspect of the game, we're not part of that. Yeah. Yeah. True. I true. mean, I've always wanted to be part of that. But true. We're, we're not. We're not part of that. True. 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 Um, so uh, there's not a whole lot of musical notes in this. No. Uh, which is fine. It's fine. Um, any favorite cameo or like any favorite? Yeah, I told you Ellen Burstyn. I love her in it. Um, okay. Um, uh, uh, Roseanne Arquette as his ex-wife. Why she's yeah. there? I. That's a nitpick. That I mean, <laughs> no, no possible reason for the woman to be there. None. None. He asks like, "What are you even doing?" He he says like, "Why are you in my office? Like, right. why are you here?" And as the viewer, um, we said the same thing. <laughs> I like the security guy though. Yeah. Uh, that's my man, uh, W. Earl Brown from uh from what, something about Mary. Uh, yeah, yeah, he's amazing. He's amazing, yeah. and he keeps asking all these crazy questions. Like when he's like, hey, "Tell me, let me know if you want to know this. Let me know." Da, 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 da. But, hey, you know, let me know. Da, you know, whatever. He was he was hilarious in it to me. Yeah, and um, and um, as a, I, I would call it a cameo. You know, he kept coming back and forth. Uh, Diddy, man, all the cam. I like the cameos. Yeah, I like the cameos. Diddy, yeah. uh, and then and then the end. They weren't really cameos as much as they were like, we're going to make this a really a movie about Cleveland. We don't know how many more of these we're going to get. Having, yeah. having Jimmy Brown. Yeah. Having, um, having Jimmy Brown and Kozar there. My main man, sidearm Bernie. I love it. Hey baby. Hey, if it wasn't for Bernie, there's not, there's no back to back for Dallas. That's true. Hey, yeah. He put uh, the role for the Cowboys. There's no back to back for Dallas without Bernie. That's how I know. Um, <laughs> I'm just, <laughs> I mean, it's, it's real. It's real. There's, there's, there's no back to back. Um, it's, it'd be like making fun of Rippin, uh, or not Rippin, uh, yeah, not Rippin, um, it'd be like, uh, Jay Schrader, not knowing who the hell Jay Schrader was, when Jay right. Schrader, right. To the, um, it's either here or there, so, uh, <laughs> every now and then, you know, we gotta, we gotta let them know, uh, but, but, but I, I liked all the cameos, man, probably, not, I mean, I don't know if one was better than another, but, um, uh, but I really like the cameos, and I mentioned this earlier, with the young GM, the way he says it, 
after you do this, everybody's going to wonder, what are you going to do next year? You can still get a handful of picks. Da, 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 da. And when he says, and when he stop, and when Costner stops things, it's like to the guy, McMichaels out in uh, St. Louis, Seattle, he says, oh, that was a different, we live in a different world now. He, he, you know, he repeats the bullshit he says to him and comes back with it. I love that interplay with him and the other GMs. No one is only 32 in this select fraternity. Uh, yeah. and, and, and so how are you going to act? You know, um, and uh, we all got a job to do. So yeah. I, I really, I really appreciated that as well. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely, man. Well, I mentioned that this is like my, my uh, sister and, and her husband's yeah. one of their, their favorite. Bring it movie, on, man. Let's do I want to see if my, my, my brother-in-law has anything to say about, about the film itself and what, 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 you know, I know he's been listening intently. <laughs> I've been listening intently. Yeah, man. No, well, you know, he they got they got the kids, man. You know, little Tony, big and, and little. Oh, that's right. And your mom and your mom went home today too. So mom well, went home today. So there's one less one less it, set of hands. And then there's one exactly there's one less <laughs> eye on the kids, man. So I don't know if he'll have an opportunity to, to come up or not, man. But uh, oh, okay, I thought he was right there. I'm sorry. No, 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 no. I'm, 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 because Malcolm was sleeping. So okay, got it. I got it. I Uncle has to be responsible. Uncle, you know, like I'm the wild wild card. Uh, I got, I've been hushed more times than, than a few this, uh, I'm sure you have I'm this sure you, more, more, t- more times than you, uh, would have liked to have been hushed. I'm sure. That's what, that's what, that's you know, what. Hey man, I've embraced my role as the, uh, as the wild uncle, the, the, Hey, the, I understand it. Yeah, man. But, uh, I'm usually, I'm usually the person saying, Hey, Hey, can you, you know, she's yeah, asleep. exactly. She's probably not asleep. She's probably not asleep, but, but she, but the door is closed. <laughs> you know, say so just eight. She's eight. But, uh, but I understand. I understand. Any, um, uh, is there a way to like text him and let it? Yeah, and, no, no, and, I did, I did, I did, I did. Okay, I did, okay, bad, 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 bad. I did. Um, but, uh, I think and, as football go, movies go. How do you think this one ranks? Uh, I think this one is uh, so it's in my top three. Nice top three football movies. Yeah, uh, I had to think about it because, like you know, Joe, there's not a whole lot of great football movies, man. As much as no, there's like four or five. I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Personally, personally, yeah. Uh, I think there's four or five. Yeah, uh, but I think this film. I'm going to start a new category today. Who do it? Who does this film? This film owes a lot to. Okay. Right. So to me, this film owes a lot to Jerry Maguire. I mean, okay. to be perfectly honest. I agree. Uh, and and probably Moneyball, in the in the in the same by talking number talking number making deals, trying to build your team in a certain type of way type thing. Uh, yeah. I think this film owes a lot to those movies. Granted, yeah. Moneyball's not a Moneyball's not a a football movie. A football story or book, but it's about sports and the business of sports. And this, this, this somehow weaves the business of sports and the actual work of, of sports and and the front office. It makes it a it's an entertaining film about front office work. Yeah, yeah. Which, which is hard to believe that that exists, but but uh, it does in this movie here. Yeah. Um, but I think it takes some. I think the heart and soul part. Uh, a lot of that is is. Jerry Maguire paved that, paved that, uh, paved that road for us to have that, and um, yeah. and so we are there. We are with that. But uh, in addition to that, um, what was I going to say? Oh, so to me, my top five football. Since we have a little time, my top five football movies are uh, Any Given Sunday, Draft Day. Uh, I don't know if I have five. Uh, little Giants. Okay, um, I love Little Giants. Love Little Giants, even though they beat the Cowboys in the end. Little <laughs> Giants. Uh, this movie. And uh, North Dallas Forty, okay. And I, I've never seen North Dallas Forty, man. I know, bro. I know. You gotta like I know. just two ninety nine right now. Like, I think you would after you watch North Dallas Forty, you'd be like, "Come on, Stone, Oliver Stone, pretty much frame for frame." Yeah, yeah. No frame for frame. <laughs> okay, just took it. I see Tony. He's coming in like a ghost. Like a thief. <laughs> no, there he is. Yeah. Vontae Mac, no matter what. Yeah, <laughs> I love. I, I love. I love to see a GM. Let me. Let me actually just lose it. Just lose, lose it. Just lose it. it. Yeah, lose yeah. the background here. Because I love to see a GM Uh-oh. and lose the lose the frosting. I love yeah. to see a GM. <laughs> um, <laughs> right on a piece of paper. I'm taking the linebacker. <laughs> no matter what, first pick. Is that even? Has a linebacker ever been first pick? I don't think that's ever happened. I don't think that's ever happened. Ever happened either. Not even like Butkus or Singletary or any of those guys. They were top or or, or Taylor. They were top ten, maybe top fifteen. But I don't even think they were. They weren't first pick. Defensive end, defensive tackle. Yeah. Oh no, here. 
first round pick by the Knicks trade, Rod Strick. There we go. There we go. <laughs> All right. Yeah, man. Let me let me let me, let me let me let me change the music. So I got my brother go. Tony here, man. So cheers. What's Merry up, brother? Christmas. Merry Happy Christmas. Holiday. Happy New Year's. Happy Abari Garden. Happy Kwanzaa. Uh, Happy Kwanzaa. Kwanzaa 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 Chagalia today. Today. Yeah, get, get it right because they will they will get you. You know, we're in LA, so it's a big thing out here, man. I, I, I hear that. I hear that. Yeah. yeah, we 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 saw we talked about seeing uh uh the Port Arthur's own uh Bun B earlier. Yeah, today, man. You never know who you're running into in LA, man. Yeah, that's the that's the beauty. He's a lot shorter than you would expect, but he's super chill. I was gonna I was gonna mention that. I figured he was kind of short. I, I, so, <laughs> yeah. Like I met I met Chuck D in Sale Hall once, and he was like sitting in a chair drawing, and. I walked up to him and he seemed so tiny and unassuming. I'm thinking like, you're checked, like right, you're checked, right? right. Like, hey, legend, this, this, legends come in small packages. Yes, I, yeah. apparently so. I met yeah, I knew Professor Griff. Uh, uh, yeah, oh yeah, I knew Professor Griff was was small, but but uh, I just I knew that from pictures and 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 everything. I met him once at King Chapel um, with Soleil, uh, yeah. uh, but but uh, but Chuck, I was like, what? I, I don't know. If, I guess Jay is the tall rapper. Yeah, uh, Jay. Jay Jay has the height. Yeah, he's the uh, he's the Jay and, he's, uh, um, Big Sean. Yeah, and, and, and Ghostface. Ah, well, of course. That's the and, and, and meth and meth meth meth's kind of tall. Yeah, meth is kind of tall too. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, man, so this, this movie has a special place in uh in, in, in Shay and Tony's uh uh. Why don't you tell us, Tony, what, what what makes this movie special to you guys? Yeah, man. So um, man, draft that goes back to right when uh, me and your sister like first started dating, like seriously. Nice. Um. And we won, like, his sister is, like, a legitimate football fan. Um, she couldn't help it in the household. Like, uh, fantasy leagues with me, like, and is is a legit competitor. Yeah. Um, and, like, she'll sit down with me. Like, our first year dating was, our first year, like, dating seriously was on um, the 2015 Carolina Panthers, like, 15 oh. and one season. Hey, and the one the one game was today. The, the uh, one game was today. Seven, we were at that ago. game I in there. Atlanta yeah. when, they, when they took the L. I was there. A beautiful thing. <laughs> um, and so, like, when we were in D.C., there was this uh, there was this bar right down the street mm -hmm. um, called Six and H. And we would okay. go there and we would watch every game there. It was like a local neighborhood bar. And you love it? Nothing to Sunday. do. Then you love party. it? Like, you love it? No the kids? Bartenders. We knew the owners. Like, it was great. It was like, it was the perfect season. But we ran, we came across um, draft day. And one, is it's kind of like symbolized like the beginning of our relationship. And two, it's like the perfect football movie, you know, mm -hmm. um, because it talks about, you know, it talks about the fanfare. It talks about the PR, but also talks about like the come up and kind of like what this means to these players yeah. and like the behind the scenes perspective from like the GMs um, and all of the staff. Um, I don't know. It's like it's like a warm place in my heart because every every year, every draft day, we watch draft day, <laughs> like beginning to end. Love it. You know? Love it. <laughs> I love that man. I love yeah, it. Man. Okay. Every day, okay. and like we'll walk around the house, you know, when you know you got like we got like a big decision coming up, or you know we just feeling kind of like stress, and be like, hey, Vontae Mack, no matter what. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love. That's great. I love it. That's I great. love it, man. And it's That's so great. funny too because this film didn't do exceptionally well. You know what I mean? Like the box office. The, I mean, it made money. We 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 looked at made money. His budget was twenty five. It did twenty nine point five. But I think it's got it's had its own life because I didn't go to the theaters to see it, mm -hmm. but it's had its own. I saw it on a plane the first time, but it, it's had its a life of its own, you know. After the really after it was in the theaters, and because it's still like a timeless football story. To your point, yeah, Tony, we see things we've never seen before in one film. That's mm -hmm. something me and Cal were talking about. How do you make a fun, engaging, sexy film about front office work, right, for a football team, and make a draft? Which you think a draft on its face is like that's exciting because a lot going on you never know whatever but you never you might only see one side like the players point of view or or the 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 agents point of view mm -hmm. or or the front office point of view but in this one you see everything yeah and it makes it it makes it wildly entertaining and I think everybody they I mean it's Ivan Reitman you know he's he's <laughs> He's a, you know, he's a the legend, right? So you're going to do the movie, but I, it looked like everybody brought their A game too. And the writing was strong enough and believable enough to be like, okay, this is great. And you're learning essentially about how these things work from all these different points of view. And so, so the come up part I thought was great too. Yeah. And it's something I was telling Calvin, 
th- when he says Vontae Mack, no matter what, this is the kind of guy you want to build your team culture around. Yeah. This yeah, kind yeah, of person. You wanted to be there, right? And that's something right. you kind of like we forget about is an important factor in the game. Is yeah. you want players that want to that want to play for you, yeah, that right. want to be there, um, that aren't going to kind of like get two years deep into their rookie contract, recognize there's a mismatch between their talent level and the talent level of those around you, and kind of right. want out. You know, you right. want somebody that's going to stick with it. So, mm-hmm. yeah, elevate uh, everybody else to, exactly. to their level. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so we made the, anal- uh, the analogy earlier, like Michael Parsons type player. You know what I mean? That's what Monte Mack was a lot like. You yeah. know what I mean? Like just that kind of, you know, minus the Twitter uh, controversies. <laughs> you know what I mean? But <laughs> stay. But what 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 do you say? Stay off Twitter. Stop yeah. tweeting. Yeah. yeah, that's what he's. That's what he's. He, that's what that's what he's saying. Kevin Costner's like uh, uh, acting in this movie is like is underrated, man. Like I, there's one scene in particular where like all of them are in the um, in the, uh, the war room. Talking about how many how many girls they think uh, Bo Callahan <laughs> slept with, and he like just slapped his hand on the table. He's like, "I'm trying real hard not to lose my shit on all of you." And I was like, "Yo, that is that is real, yeah. you know." And it also like you felt the tension, not just of kind of like what was going on in the room at the time, yeah. but everything he dealt with from yeah. the entire day. He yeah. carried it into that one scene, and yeah. the, the slap on the table not just like brought the characters in the film together. It brought us the audience to, in the focus yeah. as well. Yeah. So like, yeah, because yeah, in that role. Yeah, that's something we missed. Uh, we didn't. Yeah, we didn't, we didn't talk about that. We didn't talk about that. Thanks. This is our second Kevin Costner. We done. We done Untouchables, right? We and did. then we haven't talked about any other Kevin Costner, but I think this is uh, up there with in my top three Kevin Costner movies. Like, oh yeah, and, I got no problem with that. Yeah, I got I no mean, problem with that. I'm not a huge Bull Durham guy. You know what I mean? Me neither. Like, Me I, neither. I recognize and appreciate Bull Durham. Uh, I'm a Susan Sarandon guy. There you go. And, 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 uh, and, and our guy, uh, uh, Tim Robbins, you know what I mean? But, yeah, Timmy, come on, come on. Yeah. But, um, you know, and then, like, I mean, you know, Kevin Costner, he's in and around, but this is this is up there. And I don't think he gets enough love in terms of, like, his performance in this film. Mm-hmm. No, and I, and I like what, what, the way Tony said it. To me, that's the scene where you realize he's the boss of everything that's going on in that room. Yeah. And, and, takes the and com- completely. And um, there's only one other person above him and that's the owner um, and uh, Molina. And so it's like, okay, well, if y'all are playing, I'm in the middle. Like, you understand what we got going on? Like, this is my life. Yeah. This is our, this is everything. And y'all talking about this? Like, yeah. th- come on now. No, this yeah. is this is an NFL draft. <laughs> you, know, you know what I'm yeah. saying? So him, him, him slapping that table. Notice there was a market difference. To your point, Tony, there's a market difference in the, in the, in the mood of that room after he slaps that table, mm-hmm. they, they, they stop playing. They still eating or whatever, but they stop yeah. playing around. People are uh, they're locked in. He gives them an assignment. They pull things up. They do things quicker. Mm-hmm. Like it's like a coach, a coach chewing somebody out. I mean, I guess he did. A coach chewing somebody out. And everybody else was like, oh, "Okay." I saw a clip uh, of Aikman, probably like the '96 season, '97 season, some season, where Aikman Aikman came on the sideline, was just yelling at everybody, red faced. And he was really upset about the coaching. It was, he was mm-hmm. upset at Barry Switzer because he said Switzer wasn't like being tough enough. You know what I'm saying? With, with, the, with the players being too cool with the players, wasn't being, you know, tough enough to players like his previous coach had been. Mm-hmm. And he said it on the sideline and I thought, and, I thought, and after, supposedly after Aikman ripped it to him, you know, they went out and they, they won the game. But the, the point being, there's a difference in it, knowing when to do that. And 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 uh, and and how to use that effectively, I think is great. And to your point about his performance, um, he seemed to he seemed to be cool under pressure the entire time, know what to say at the right time, but also knew when to flex. Yeah, because that was the time to flex. And obviously, you only need to do it once because yeah. most of them were former players. Many many of them were former players. Yeah. So so many of them were. So they knew. All right, all right, all right. So yeah. Talk, players want right. to be coached. Yeah. You know what I mean. Like Men, people want to be coached. led, people want to be led, and, and followers want to be led. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. But yes, they 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 need you to do it in an authentic way and in the right moments, in the right spots. Pick your spots, and he did it there. That was that was perfect. Yeah. I think that was spot on. Yeah, there were two other like uh, like uh, uh, moments in the film that I thought were kind of fascinating. And I'm not sure if they were intentional or if it's just kind of like how how everything kind of played out. One was like every time you see Molina, he's wearing shades, even when yeah. it doesn't make sense. Right. Like he's indoors and he's wearing shades. And I thought yeah. that kind of like spoke to like the difference of his perspective. Right. Like he's seen things totally different from everybody else, <laughs> yeah. like throughout yeah. the entire movie. Like he's so focused on 
like, all right, Bo Callahan's going to be here. We got the number one draft pick. It's going to be butts and seats, but it has nothing to do with actually being able to, like, win football games. Right, right. right. Um, He's looking at the, the game. One is, uh, yeah. is credit to Jennifer Gardner, kind of like the way she played her character, because um, she's sitting down um, with the head coach and is like, you know, he's kind of like rolling off, you know, I'm flying like this whole like play or whatever. She's like, I know, you know, I know what you're talking about. Like, why are you bringing this to me? You know, she's like, she was the consummate professional yeah. like the entire time. In yeah. fact, she's the only person in GM space <laughs> that is actually professional. Yeah, the whole yeah in the C-suite. Yeah, she's the only one in the C-suite <laughs> yeah. professional. You're right. She is. And of course she has to be, right? For all women everywhere, right? Mm -hmm. But but to your to your point, I I I forgot. I forgot about that scene, which was a great scene, mm -hmm. you know, um, and she has a little joke. I let that joke slide about why is it the greatest, why is it the the gift, the prize for the, this thing, the winning thing. Yeah, the most massive sport in America. Oh, piece of jewelry, I, yeah. Piece of jewelry, right? It just is. I don't I don't I don't know what to tell you. It just is. But <laughs> but but to your point, she 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 was even killed and totally professional the whole time. And unlike others, did not let that outside stuff affect. Her doing her work she had a human growing inside of her right <laughs> then, then she, then she, a whole human that she made with a man that might not be too jazzed about being yeah. a father and yet and yet the response was rough that morning and yet she came into work and she's doing her job because she understands how important it is yeah you know that that's yeah jennifer yeah. garner she she uh she rocked the role she really she, rocked she did she really did and like she did a lot with the little right like same thing with chadwick bozeman they have very little time on screen yeah, but what yeah. they did definitely elevated the film. So, like, credit to them and the, my work in the craft. Yeah. yeah. Without question. Let me ask y'all this, man. As far as single day movies go, because this is uh, a this is a this is a single day movie. This is a like twelve hours. Twelve hours in a day, right? Yeah. 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 Uh, you know, I mean, like Ferris Bueller obviously is the or at least for me the the pinnacle <laughs> of that. You know what I mean? But this is up Maybe. there as, as well, man. In one, terms of like one fine day, one fine day with uh, with uh, Clooney and uh, Pfeiffer. It's called oh, one fine day. It's about a day. Sorry, go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. yeah, man. This is this is up there. Uh, what Joe? What's, what's your favorite uh, single day movie? I don't know, man. Uh, probably Pineapple Express is on the list. Um, okay. I love. I know we never we never really talked about. It. I'm pretty sure you have severe thoughts and feelings about it. But uh, I love I love Pineapple Express. Uh, it's it's on my list. This look, I love draft day. So if I have a list of ten or five, it's on the list. Yeah. Uh, because because of the fact that what they, of course, Ferris Bueller, because of what they're able to do, uh, do the right thing is up there on that list yeah. for me as yeah. well. Yeah. Um, for, you know, for very obvious reasons, but but if that's a day, literally a day. Yeah. Uh, I guess yeah. it ends the next day, so it's twenty four hours. But it's twenty four hours. Uh, it's twenty four hours. But um, you know, movies like that that can tell you a lot in 100 minutes or 90 minutes and you, you get all the emotion out of you and it ends in a certain type of way so yeah this this is a, this is one day movies this is this is pretty thank you thank you for that thought calvin yeah. hey you're messing my head up thanks for that yeah. <laughs> that's what i do man that's i know I you do. do yes you do yeah um, i'm about you Tony. Like christmas carol parody mm. or like similar like we're in the holiday season like i'm, I'm yeah. a huge christmas carol yeah. fan and all of its yeah. iterations i love every single yeah. one of them and this yeah. is me being vulnerable and exposing my sappiness right now. So, you know, respect. <laughs> um, That's, what gonna... That's what we do. That's what we do. Oh, trust me. <laughs> and I'm going to say Die Hard with the Vengeance. Single day okay. movie. Okay. You know, okay. and it's, it's a heavy ride all the way to the end. And when you get to the end of that movie, like, you're tired, too. Like, yeah. you actually did work. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm just thinking about that. They're clearly not, you know, at the end of that movie, they're clearly not. The, it's voice over, It's voiceover that caller, man. When he, when he says, when he says the. But that's that's three, right? Yeah, yeah. And he says something like, "Call her, man. Here, here's some money. Go call. He's supposed to call. He's supposed to call. Um, what's her name? Who's calling uh, his wife? Yeah, yeah. Gennaro. Uh, was it Lisa or Holly Gennaro? Holly. Look at him go. Yeah. He's yeah. supposed to call, look at that Morales man. He's supposed to call Holly like the whole movie. <laughs> mm -hmm. He won't call Holly. You know, it's like the running joke. Yeah. You know, and, and of course Sam Jackson because he's a black character who can't have a life of his own, can't have any any of that any of that stuff of his own, right? He, not unlike Reginald L. Johnson, um, he 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 keeps pushing him over and over again. Call your wife, man! Like yeah. we almost died four times today. Today we yeah. almost died four times today. It took them from New York to what was it? The camp, like almost Montreal. They're in Canada. Yeah, yeah. 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 The night. <laughs> there. And the last time he's supposed to call his wife, he walks away from the phone before she answers. Yes, yes. <laughs> which is yeah. so weird. Obviously, Bonnie Bedelia was supposed to be in it. 
and something must have fell to fall apart. Yeah, it's kind of like yeah. that last season of Martin when, when Tisha and, and Martin uh, <laughs> couldn't be the same. Thing. <laughs> That's it. Yeah, man. What about you? What are your one day movies? I love the Die Hard, by the way. Great, great choice on that. What about you, Cal? I mean, so like this, uh, Ferris Bueller, like we mentioned, um, you know, uh, I'm trying to think of, there's another one that's on the tip of my tongue that is a one day, uh, it's, it's a holiday movie as well. Uh, I'm not going to think of it, man. But uh, like, just, I like the genre. I like the idea of a one day movie, a encapsulation. Like, I mean, do the right thing, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that, 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 you know, a day in the life type deal. Um, but uh, this this is this is up there in terms of like, you know, I mean, especially for an event, mm -hmm. because like it doesn't it doesn't waste a lot of time talking about the pre planning and everything like that. You assume that that's already done. Right. right. You assume yeah. that you've been doing your draft prep for months. Uh, right. Years. It's the chaos of the actual day when that actual day comes. And I think that's what I appreciate the most. about. Oh, dog day afternoon is another one. It's not really necessarily mm -hmm. hol hol holiday, but like, um, you know, I the point being that like, you know, forget all the prep. Nobody cares about that. We want to see the action and how all your prep kind of goes to the wayside. Yeah, because yeah, that like once your prep is done and you're yeah. in draft day, you're no longer making decisions yeah. in the vacuum. Yeah. And like everything nope. everyone else does affects yeah. your affects each decision. Yeah. Each right. follow on decision. And that was one of the things that I appreciated, like in kind of like the climax of the film. Yeah. Where like the when Bo, Bo Callahan starts to drop and yeah. all of a sudden like they're making all of these trades and it's kind of like it kind of brings in the focus for the viewer and for like true football fans, like how much can go wrong in the span of kind of like that two, three day period. Yeah. Um, and how your decisions can change on a dime. And a lot of it is based on assumptions about what the previous team is going to do or whoever's peeking ahead of you is going to do. Right. Everything, everything changes. And you're like, this, this joker failed to me. Like this yeah, joker's yeah. out, this, this guy's yeah. out here. We were I looking at a little bit. But... It's not holiday movies. These are LA movies that are, are that need to be in my single day. So collateral training day, and then my final one is clerks. clerks. House party. I add house party. <laughs> okay, love it. Love all of them. Yeah, 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 I'd, yeah. I'd, add, I'd add house party uh, uh, okay. as well. Yes, uh, yes, definitely a single day. Yes, single, shoot Friday. Friday. I, actually, all the Friday Fridays. after next. Yeah, Friday after next. Like all the Fridays. <laughs> uh, our, our, our single day. I mean, that's yeah. there. Single day, single camera format. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Shout out to Harold Ramis. Um, but they, they're, they're, you know, most of them are like that. But but yeah. I'm with you. I'm with you. I'm yeah. with you on all those. Um, yeah, man. But it, it's it's interesting, too, though. That part where I don't take him, he falls. And, and then I'm, that other part, like, well, what's wrong with him? We've right. done all our research. We don't know. what You we, you right. telling me yeah. something's wrong with this guy? Like, what? Yeah. tell yeah. me, what's wrong with him? Yeah. And I, I think he's a bust. Okay. All right. He saw the character, to your point, to your point, the character thing he did see in Vontae Mack, he did not see in Bo Callahan. That's right. right. That's right. And and then and then it's only it's doubled down on with the um the security your boy from a something about Mary, security yeah. guy who yeah. comes back and says, Oh yeah, he lied. He, he said he lies about this. Like, okay. Yeah, All right. Is that who I want to be my yeah. franchise yeah. quarterback? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, man. but but in my mind, like you're 20, 20 years old, you know. Okay, but, but you know what though, as as again as a football fan, like how many times, like the worst thing that can ever happen to your team is for you to have a high draft pe draft pick that someone is guaranteed pro ready and they're yeah. a bust. Bust yeah. and like that's like the boogeyman and that, that circles around every draft. Yeah, yeah. So like the word, like I think he's a bust. It's kind of like a like a that was it. word. You know, that was like, it. He I, says I, don't, it. I don't want any parts of that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he yeah. says it. I mean, he says it. So you know, it is what it is. Bo eventually gets picked up, you know, fine, whatever. We got a quarterback. Mm -hmm. All right, no problem. I got, I got a quarterback. That's yeah. fine. Mm -hmm. And he, and if you listen bad. to like the soundtrack when he says like, I think he's a bust, like the music's playing and then it drops, it drops out. out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like yeah, as yeah. soon as he says, I think he's a bust. Yeah, because like, bust, hits, bust is like the. That's it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's yeah. it. Yeah, the, the, and, and that's, that's probably good. some yeah. of the authenticity. That's probably some of the great authenticity though. Also, in that's in that film. Yeah. Um, that's the thing, man. This movie's unheralded, man. I, or maybe it is, <laughs> and we're just not in the conversations. It's, it gets I, better every time you see it. Too. Every time you see it, yeah. Because I start to notice, I start to notice little things that I didn't notice before. Um, yeah, it's funny. I started to notice little things I didn't notice before with every other viewing. Uh, but but um, and I think I'm at the point now that I've seen it all. Uh, yeah. I think I, but I'm gonna know. I'm gonna go back and what Tony said. I'm gonna go back and listen and watch just for mm -hmm. just for seeing the music drop out uh, <laughs> when he says he's a bust. Because to your point, in their world, 
If you say bust, bust is like that's the one you like, hold up now. If yeah, you say man, bust, there's no coming back it, right? Like how many yeah. times yeah. we've all seen Matt Lyon, ba- Baker, that's Baker, Baker. Yeah, Andre Bruce, look, uh, Ryan Leaf. Yeah. Uh, yeah, what was the brother? Jamarcus Russell. Uh, Jamarcus Russell. Russell. Yeah. yeah, I mean, yeah. there's been countless Johnny Manziel. Manziel, oh, he, hey, come on. Money man. In fact, I said Baker, but I really meant man. I was when I was saying Baker, I meant man. I mean, you're, but you're not wrong either way. <laughs> I, I know, I know, I, I know. Even though Baker had a game of his life the other night, but but Manziel didn't even have that. Yeah, yeah. He you know, or, or uh, what's the guy Marinovich? Ty Marinovich. You know oh, what I mean? Like the look, ultimate. He could never. It's, it's oh, so yeah. many of them. To y'all's point, man, it's so many of them that like you you kind of build your franchise around and, yeah. and, and your hopes and dreams, and you're gonna build like this is it. This is the guy that's gonna bring us out of so we never have to draft in this position again. Mm-hmm. And it's then, usually in that role, it's usually yeah. in the quarterback position. Yeah, and, and you gotta be damn certain. And I and I and I guess he wasn't he wasn't yeah. damn certain, <laughs> yeah. obviously. Something yeah. he that he didn't, but he wasn't gonna tip his hand either. You know, that that's yeah. the other thing. Sonny wasn't really gonna tip his hand, so yeah, he didn't he didn't. He didn't say it. He didn't really even say anything about, and he was going to draft him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because all the conventional wisdom says, all right, yeah. we'll go yeah. here. Unless you convince me. Best quarterback up. available. You take yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. And it, 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 that he says, you know why. Like, he says, well, why are you going to take it? He says, you know why. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like, when, he, when he says to the quarterback, like, you know why I got to do this. I'm sorry. Yeah. Man, what were we going to say? No, I was going to say, as a poker player, like, I really appreciated the fact that, like, you know, he, he didn't tip his hand. Yeah. And, and, yeah. and got everything he wanted. You know what I mean? That was the one thing that I, you know, really appreciate about how it all went down was he had a long-term plan as to how he wanted to go down um, that didn't make everybody all parties aware of until that party's time Mm -hmm. came into it. You know what I mean? And he had a bigger vision of what it was than than anybody else, which is how you get in a position like that, which is how you stay in a position like that. You know what I mean? You know, know, it's interesting. There's a fair amount of like, like, um, like suspension of disbelief and kind of like the, the way, but it was really, it was a compression of, like a sequence of successful drafts as opposed to until like one successful draft. Yeah. Because right. when you look at a successful GM and like in real terms, what you really want is somebody that can turn like a few picks into multiple picks mm-hmm. because, you know, you need, a, in order to build like a true dynasty, you need a lot of youth at the yeah. same time performing yeah. at a high level, you know, yeah. over a course of years before like, you know, the prices, the price comes due, you know, right. you got to start paying guys and you can't hold that team together. So his ability to turn like, you know, one pick, and so what I think it's like five by the time by the end of the uh yeah, five the players, turn to five players and a punter. Yeah. And and yeah. Uh but yes, that's, that's the other thing I was gonna say. And Calvin, I know it's gonna you know it's going it's coming back to this very moment that happened in real life, and, and even though it gets no love for it, the it comes back to the Cowboys. And I'm gonna say I'm from Dallas, Tony. So I'm, I'm just gonna say this. I, I won't hold it against you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Uh for the moment. <laughs> I appreciate that. But but Jerry, Jimmy and Jerry did that. They Jimmy did they did that, right? With with a few picks, they turned it into a variety of other things. Interestingly enough, when they had their first round pick after going one of 15, first pick in the draft, the whole world told them to go out to Rocket Ishmael. The whole, the whole world, conventional wisdom, tops already or uh, pro set already had a card made. Rocket Ishmael, he won the Heisman, I think. He he was a top player on Lou Holtz's Notre Dame team. They won the national championship. That's who he take. No. He goes defense. He goes Russell Maryland. Yeah. Okay. Yep. What? He go, he goes defense. Russell Maryland out of Miami, who he coached. Russell yep. Maryland. Out of Miami. He had a quarter. He had a quarterback. Yeah. He had a quarterback. Yep. He goes Russell Maryland with the next with the with the sixth pick. He go or nine or six or nine. He takes Emmett Smith out of Florida. Okay. They they take a couple other guys. They draft a guy named Darren Woodson. Uh, Okay, who should be in the Hall of Fame? I, I can't believe he's not, but should be in the Hall of Fame. But yeah. they start putting pieces together. Yep. But it started with defense, and it's really interesting because later, many years later, when um, Houston, everybody thought they were going to take Bush. Remember that? Yep. Everybody thought they were going to take Bush, and they get Mario they took Mario Williams, which was really kind of like, huh? But I remember reading in Texas Monthly Magazine, Castle was like, Nah, I mean they just did this, and they did it in Dallas with a defensive player. Now, it wasn't Mario Williams that they should have chosen. chosen. It wasn't even Jadavion Dango Cloudy. It was J.J. Watt. Yeah. Later, later was, yeah. later was yeah. that defensive stud. Not J.J. Watt, who just retired today. Just retired, right? right. Retired. Exactly. They're yeah. just cursed. They're just they're just cursed. I, clean, yeah. I mean, Houston's just, they're just cursed. Yeah. But I'm saying, they eventually built, tried to build something around that guy. And that, that was, in a sense, he was doing it. Like, I've got this player over here. I got this over here. We can put some, we need a running back. We're going to get him. We're going to get this running back. Who's a great another another hometown guy? 
Cleveland guy, right? Mm-hmm. Son of a Cleveland Brown. I did have a I did have an issue on this. I want to say this, Calvin. Sorry, I forgot yeah. to mention this. So let me get this straight. A Cleveland Brown son, running back son, gets in a fight, says the guys he grew up with, he's a son of a Brown. The <laughs> guys he grew up with were like banging or were into fighting or 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 this mm-hmm. or that and the other. I grew up with some some kids whose dads were in, uh, played for the, for the Cowboys. Um, none of us, no one was fighting. No, there was there were no there was no no one no one was no one was insulated. fighting. Very very insulated experience. Mm-hmm. And I and I'm talking about in the 70s and early 80s. This kid would have grown up in the 90s and the early 2000s. I'm sorry, that part of the story made no sense to me. I yeah. can see if it was like some guys from college on the team because hey, it, it go it's wild. I. I can see it was like my cousin, my cousins and him got into it because he got into a fight. He hit some guy, whatever he yeah. said. He he blamed it on friends he grew up with. And I thought to myself, where, what Cleveland, where were you growing up? Like, what are you talking about? That just, that was sloppy writing to me because he's a black kid. Yeah, the only thing that made me square that circle for me was like, clearly your pops rode the bench. Like he was, he was, he was <laughs> making that league minimum. So you was, you was but just the, in like. But Tony, you understand what I'm saying? You understand what I'm saying? Like, neighborhood, not the rich neighborhood, the rich urban yeah, neighborhood. I guess so. But I'm thinking like, where were you, where y'all, are, you grew up with guys that are going to go beat up, going to get in the barroom fights. I I mean, people fight, you know, people yeah, fight. Yeah, we, yeah. we went to Morehouse, guys fight. But, yeah, but, yeah. but I'm, I'm it, it's just kind of like that, that just didn't make sense. That part. Didn't make yeah, sense. It, to it, me. It, it, it was a little gymnastics there. I, 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 yeah, yeah. Go to go to the Buick. Turn around. Like I can see. I can yeah. see Willie Beeman. <laughs> yeah. I can see yeah, Willie Beeman. Hey, how can I get any given Sunday? Your, your mama's <laughs> in the hood, and your mama's yeah. cooking dinner. I can see I that. Mean, I also add in that, like you know, it's the the a football player got in a fight. Like in in the grand scheme of things, assuming that nobody was like you know seriously injured, does not matter at Hill of Beans. Like a, a, a human being paid to do violence did something <laughs> violent. Um, and, you know, uh, next, moving on. Like yeah. other news, water is wet. But, yeah. you know, and on draft day, like surrounding that data element, you know, yeah. like every little thing gets amplified. Yeah. Um, there was a sequence uh, last year's draft with Malik Willis where someone like, you know, just spontaneously films Malik Willis giving food to, uh, to an unhoused person on the street in New York. I was yeah. like, I remember that. Um, it was like the day before know. the draft. What they were at the combine or something like that. And they, it was like they were, the they day were, before the draft. But uh, yeah, yeah. But he had on like his combine. He yeah. had on something NFL related. Yeah, yeah. So everyone you could easily pick him out yeah. from everyone else. So you I'm, know what? Like, I fell for it, on, on I fell for it, on, on, Like YouTube or whatever. It's kind of like, all right, man, I get it. You know, it's the draft is just as much about PR as it is about Ooh, talent. Yeah. All about PR. You know? Yeah. Actually, now like, they, I made the joke with Calvin the other day where like, uh, every year, Ohio State convinces us that they have the second coming with regards to like the quarterback position. Yeah, like you know, it's it's a toss up. You know, there's a lot of development still going on. Like right now, CJ Stroud, they're trying to convince us that like this is the dude. Mm-hmm. You know, and every year it's the same. So it's like I, credit to all of these guys. You know, they put their life on the line. They play hard. But you know, there's a lot of PRs doing the heavy lifts. Yeah, every draft day. No, that, that, to your point about Ohio State, I didn't even think about that. There's a string of these quarterbacks from Ohio State. That were literally should be the top five, six quarterbacks in the entire National Football League, and should have all they should have won the Heisman for the last ten years mm-hmm. because of the guys that they had told us who are the best. Mm-hmm. If you play quarterback for Ohio State, you are guaranteed to have a juggernaut of a PR machine behind you that's mm-hmm. gonna that's gonna build you up. And not, not to say you don't have the yards and you didn't you didn't throw those touchdowns and all that, but to your point, to your point, <laughs> I, there have been quarterback after quarterback that, that they told us from Ohio State that's gonna be the next guy, yep. and Sometimes yep. they are. Ninety nine percent of the time, they're not. Mm-hmm. Yep. They're not. But like I was believing it was CJ's uh, award to lose all season. Not even knowing about the kid out of SC. Not even. Yeah. Not yeah. even knowing about the kid out of SC. And obscurity. <laughs> completely in Los Angeles for the Trojans. Okay, yeah. makes no. That makes no. That was my the world. Is, the world is a whole different place. I was saying CJ Stroud because that's what I was hearing on the radio. That's yeah, what yeah. I'm, yeah. That's what we were told. That's, that's what, what I was told, we told. in Georgia. I was hearing that instead of Stetson, right? Mm-hmm. So, so who was undefeated? You know, you know, whatever. But to your point, PR man is is huge, and we didn't. There was a time it was real simple. It was it was it was so simple with PR. But now it's so, far more sophisticated, mm-hmm. and there are these campaigns. Literally, I mean, the movie the pro, oh, I forgot the program. Programs in my top five. Program. Sorry, I got a I got a bump. 
I'm a little giant is number six. The program is on top. Okay. Uh, <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, but, but I was going to say, uh, in the program, they they mentioned the Heisman campaign. You yeah. know, that, that was like, and if I'm not mistaken, I don't think a movie had ever said, this is a campaign. Like, we are going to send this out. This is what we're going to do. Kane is able. We're going we're gonna to promote this mm-hmm. for you. You just go do your thing on the field and be nice when the reporters ask you questions. It's like, oh, shoot. Okay, this is part of a, you don't just win this award? <laughs> yeah, yeah you, right. got, you got to build right. support. You right. know? Right. Yeah, right. when I'm a kid, I thought Doug Flutie won because they threw one because he threw one pass. When I'm a kid, that's what I thought happened. But no, he did. They've been working, man. They working the, like you worked the rest. They were working, the, working the writers, working and doing the thing all that time. And and it's no, it's no different today. It's probably even far more extravagant today. Mm-hmm. But yeah. but uh, that PR is that PR is huge. And so I thought uh, draft they did a great job of kind of like bringing that to like the forefront, right? Because the like almost like the second or the first name you hear in the movie is Bo Callahan and you hear Bo Callahan like every like five minutes mm-hmm. throughout the movie so like you get to the point where like you know even when um you know uh Sonny's getting all of this kind of like this back traffic on you know who is Bo Callahan and like is he a worth it player like you yourself as the viewer are like questioning like uh but it's Bo Callahan you right know? right because like, right. you gotta do it so many times. Yeah. Yeah, yeah we got to say both to, to think of him. Yeah. He eventually went to Seattle, right? That's that's yeah. where he went. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. He went to Seattle. So Seattle traded with uh Jackson or with, they traded that pick from Jacksonville to uh Cleveland and then mm-hmm. Cleveland traded it back to yeah. uh to Seattle. And he got his picks back. So and he got his picks back. He ended up dropping like four or five slots. Yeah. 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 Which is, you know, money. And say he's good. He looks like guy with the pick main face. And then he a little bit. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, man, it's a great movie, man. Hey, look, man. So, this is the uh, the end of the year. This is the time, yes. my favorite time of year, where I can truly tell people, uh, I'll "See you next year," uh, <laughs> and, and mean it. Uh, you, are, you are you are one of those guys. <laughs> I, I'm definitely all day one of those guys. Uh, <laughs> you are one of those guys. You see, next yeah, year. man. Uh, but we, we, you know, we we we're in and on the right now. Joe, Joe and I, we, as we mentioned at the top of the show, we're in the, in the, uh, the La Liga uh, La Liga Bowl seven. Um, there's guaranteed to be a new champion. Uh, somebody's ever won the championship before. It's going to win. Somebody on this, yes. Hey, man, good luck. Good luck. As somebody that just got put out this weekend. Oh, you know, I'm sorry. Thank yeah, you. tragic, tragic. It hurt. Yeah, it was. I'm sorry. Yeah, it, was, it was one of those where it looked like it might be one way. And then Tom Brady. We've all, we've all been. You know, it, Brady, it, the I'm, end. I'm legit upset with Josh McDaniels. Um, <laughs> and I feel Josh Jacobs, his frustration because you know you got a number one rush in the league and the man not touching the ball. I just don't. I, I, I do not understand. Look, I don't understand why they're not giving to him thirty times a game. Like, what do you? Yeah. What do you have to lose? Yeah, yeah. What do you yeah. possibly have to lose after the walk off home run? I mean, home run after the walk off uh, touchdown the other day a couple weeks ago. He's hot, he's the, he's one of the hottest running backs in the league right now, leading the league. Why not just give him the ball? Just let him run. Yeah. Just unless unless it's Mark Davis saying unless it's Mark Davis saying. We're putting him on the shelf for, for the rest of the season. And I don't know. I mean, everybody got a boss. So, uh, but but find a way, dick it up, find a way to get it to him. Yeah. You yeah. know, yeah. whatever, whatever it touch. Yeah. I don't understand that. Yeah. I, I, I don't understand it. I can I see mean, if you're down. You know, since we've been since little league, we've all been taught, you know, when you got the lead, run the ball. Yeah. Get yeah. that clock out. Run the clock yeah. out. I don't I don't get it. Yeah, these these coaches get too cute with things, man. But uh start, I mean, know. it's Carol, yeah, man. Pete Carroll. Yeah. In the, in the, 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 I mean, that, that's why I, I saw a clip the other day said, Why do you throw it if you have Lynch? I, it, was, it was the refs talking, the refs yeah, were talking yeah. in that Super Bowl, <laughs> yeah. And, they, and they, yeah. they said it like, Why, why it made sense to everybody except for who it needed to make sense for? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, so still, we'll never good. see it coming. Like, well, it doesn't matter if they can, they, they no, can't they can't stop it. Yeah. That's, that's yeah. the whole beauty of football. You, yeah. the, my 11, you're 11, and you know mm-hmm. what we're going to do, and yeah. we know you yeah, can't, you can't, can't stop it. No, mm-hmm. here we come. That's yeah. that's one of the most beautiful things about football. Yeah, yeah. don't be cute. Yeah. Just run down their throats. Well, mm-hmm. One thing's for certain, man. Open Tabs Podcast will be back. We'll be here in 2023. Can't wait. Some great things for you. Uh, but until <laughs> next time, I'm, I'm Joe. I'm um, Calvin Smith with Joe Carlos and my, my main man, my, my brother in love, Tony. Hey, Brown. let's give a, sh- a shout out to Tony Reg. Hey, Tony, you came through with the expert expert analysis. Yes, expert analysis, man. I hey, man, that's what my, I do. This- that's what I do. I, I sit. I sit in front of my computer, you know, working and think big thoughts. 
Oh, let me tell you. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. See, he's being he's being a little modest, man. Look, <laughs> this year, uh, you know, we had some robust discussion in 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 the uh the co-op fantasy football league talking about uh the value of the tight end. And, and, oh, yeah. and Tony has said enough is enough about the talk. <laughs> let's let's actually so for his he's graduating in the spring from Pepperdine's oh, uh, which which program is it? Uh I'm getting my MBA at Pepperdine University. Oh, so congratulations, man. Thank you, sir. His project no that he did was on the actual value of the tight end in fantasy football. Yeah. I took a, oh, a communication and data class, and it basically okay. taught us how to use Tableau. Yeah. Um, so I, I took all the data that I could scrub from the internet um, and built this, like, this presentation for the co-op on like what the true value is of the tight end position in fantasy football. You know, yeah, yeah, I, I hear you. No, I hear you. Not, like, the NFL guys come down and crush me, but you know, <laughs> uh, obviously there's, there's true value in that position and all the hard work that these men put down. But in terms of like a fantasy football, I would rather see a flex position uh, than than like a dedicated tight end position. Because if you don't get Andrews, Kelsey, Goddard, or Kittle, next. <laughs> yeah, yeah, might as well not draft I, I, I have I have Kittle, and uh, I had Ertz, and uh, Kittle had a Kittle had a slow start to the year, but uh, the kid loves him. Purdy loves Kittle. So yeah. if if it wasn't for Kittle, I wouldn't be the championship. I wouldn't have won. I wouldn't have won my hey, first round. Game, me out and, and, and to your point, I got Kelsey yeah. in that league, right? And, 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 and a master stroke. Thank you, Malachi, for that trade. Because uh, yeah, so Justin Jefferson essentially for uh, for for Kelsey and uh, and AJ Brown. Uh, he got uh, he got Justin Jefferson and um, which tight end did he get for me? I uh, can't remember, but Justin Jefferson. Uh, that's that would yeah. be a, 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 a you know a keeper for years to come. Yeah. And, and uh, you know, but to your point, that's a real select group. Mm-hmm. And if you ain't one of those four or five guys, yeah, man, there's, there's 27 more that are going to give you four to six points, probably. Four to six. If points, you're lucky, it's feast or famine. It's yeah. feast or famine with that. Yeah. So, yeah. so yeah. all you commissions out here, if you're listening, man, reconsider. <laughs> I, I'm definitely, you know, I'm definitely thinking about that, that flex position, and and and, you know, it makes it makes for it makes for some different decisions. I'll put it. If that you way. remember, Cal has a fighting to... tradition. Well, yeah, yeah like, but but, I mean. That's where we are. Yeah, you know, yeah. that's that's where we are. Is, is, that's where the that's where the league is right now. Yeah. Um, until some of these guys from college, from Georgia specifically, get to the league. Um, and Joku and Joku might might ruffle feathers every now and then too. Um, yeah, yeah. But but until, until out of uh, Tennessee. Yeah, He's, yeah. He he might he might a little bit, but but they're not nearly as Kelsey is. The, the I, had, look, I had him his second 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 year third year. I had him for years. He was yeah. like my my Eli DePlasco. That was yeah. two touchdowns a game, the stat. Mm-hmm. That was two touchdowns a game. You could count on it. Like the yards from Eli. The data backs it up. Like, you know, he's yeah. guaranteed you two scores a game. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So why why wouldn't you want that in your lineup? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and if you can't, look at if you can't, you better get the second best thing you can. <laughs> <laughs> See, here, here's, Literally. here's actual fantasy football having applications towards real life. So there you go. <laughs> well, you've got a lot of <laughs> That's why I wrote it. That's Science. why I wrote it the way I did on Facebook. Like, if you're not a part of this, let us live. Yeah, us live. exactly, exactly. exactly. <laughs> I, I, pre- I always appreciate that, bro. Well, oh yeah, because my brother has a joke. He's like, "It's fantasy. It's not really like, yeah, hey, shut the shut, leave me alone." You know, <laughs> until you play, buddy. Because my brother's a huge football fan. If he were to play, he'd be just as crazed yeah. as, as the rest of us, sweating out a a Tennessee Arizona game. You know, like on yeah. a Thursday night. Um, yeah. And I, I was gonna say last night, I really hated the fact that. The Mannings weren't there. Like it, it listen to Aikman and Buck. Aikman Buck was singing. Aikman's laughing at the players. Uh, it was just, man, it was bad. And, and they keep getting their games aren't really good. That's mm-hmm. the only thing I'll I'll give them. It's not their fault. It's yeah. just the, the Monday night slate has just not been yeah. And see, they're uh, used to having the top game. Yeah, exactly. Not just because it's Monday night, but they they get the selection of the quote unquote top game, game yeah. of the week, which is a de- a derivation made like the previous week. <laughs> you know that designation excuse me yeah. made the previous week so it's not like we made this thing it's not like the roster i mean the uh schedule of games they make it like april or may or june like they're making it they decide to get the week yeah right there in real time so so this yeah. really should be a good matchup normally i but, mean periodically uh, we go through these, these seasons in the nfl where you know there's just this massive misalignment in talent yeah yeah and it takes an off season for everything to kind of yeah to off. flip to flip or, yeah. or to, to, for the parody to for the dust to settle yeah, yeah. On that. thursday night thursday night's been a little tough like that too 
Yeah. Uh, and I hate that because Michael seems like he'd rather be anywhere else. In anywhere the world. else. He doesn't even have <laughs> the usual uh, zeal for the gambling guys out there. You know what I mean? It's just <laughs> he, like, he, Michael's he's going through the motions. He seems so bored. And, and, and Herb Street is trying. He has so much reverence for Michael's. He's carrying him. He's trying to talk. Michael's will bring something up to nine, like 70% of the viewers have never heard of. Just like, just like uh, Bourbon. No one knows. M- most of those people watching do not know. Oh, they turn it off when Bourbon yeah, comes yeah. on. Because they don't understand what he's referencing. Yeah, his references are outdated. You know, at, oh boy, completely outdated. But, but, but nonetheless, I, there is still that solid core of, of viewers. They want to see, they want to hear him, you know, slurp his way through the uh, the fastest three minutes. Yeah. Uh, with all his, yeah. his uh, some executive in ESPN is happy then. I mean, or he got the pictures on him or something. I, I don't know. I don't know what it is. He, he's got you with me, Leather. <laughs> he come with me. Yeah, he, he's, yeah. But nonetheless, please enjoy this time together. Tony, thank you so much. Sh- huge shout out, man. You're, hey, man, you're thank you guys for, for finally letting me on. Thank you. you know, oh, been, oh, thank you. I've been begging, big bro. <laughs> we're, 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 we got to find please. something else. We got. I like to in person. No, we get you back on. Hey, <laughs> yeah, we got to find, you, you tell us the movie. I'll even yeah, watch, tell us. I'll even watch some bad movie. Yeah, I'm, a, I'm a cinephile, man. So you can, you can toss anything at me and I'm ready okay. to play. All right. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> but so y'all know okay. it's 2023, another Tony Braswell appearance. I, I can't wait. Next time, y'all enjoy the holidays, Bargani, all that good stuff, and we'll see you the next time. Peace. Peace.